Now, Luminar 2018 was first launched in late 2016 and was, at that time, just a bit underwhelming. It was slow and lacking in some features that Photoshop and Lightroom users have come to expect. Now, the potential was there as it was very easy to use, like Adobe Camera Raw, but the performance was so bad that it was completely unusable. Now, fast forward to late 2017 and with the release of Luminar 2018, most everything has been fixed and the performance improvements make it one of the best alternatives to Photoshop yet. It's very intuitive, everything is easy to find, and the results are very good. You can install it as a plug-in for Photoshop, Lightroom, and Photoshop Elements. Now, if you have Elements, you'll no doubt notice that it doesn't like RAW files or even 16-bit TIFFs. Now, Elements users have a very good RAW converter and an app that handles TIFF images. Now, let's take a look at this excellent application. And you'll notice here that when you see open image or batch processing, this tells you that Luminar has no directory navigational function at all, just like Adobe Camera Raw. So in that respect, it's very, very similar. Let's go ahead and open an image. And I'll just take this one for no apparent reason. Go ahead and hit open. And this is a very large raw file, so it may take just a minute to go in there. Now that's not unusual. That's not Luminar's fault. That's true across the board. This is a 50 megapixel image out of a Pentax 645Z. So it does take a while. Now once the image comes up, you'll notice the thumbnails at the bottom, and this represents a number of presets that automatically load under the basic heading in Luminar. Now, the one thing you'll notice about Luminar is it is a glorified presets and filter administrator, kind of like on one. It loves presets and filters. And really, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you go ahead and just hit one and go from there. And if you want to adjust the effect, you can adjust it. And then once you choose a preset, from that point, you can make your adjustments based on your individual image. So having presets in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that some people use them as a crutch. They'll click on it and go down the road from there without actually tweaking the image, which is what it was supposed to provide you with. So we'll go ahead and leave this adjustment on highlights because it does do a very good job of bringing out the detail in the clouds on this overcast day. Now, one thing to remember about Luminar is that it is an alternative for Photoshop, but strangely enough, you can load it as a plugin for Photoshop if you want to. Let's go ahead and examine how we do that. Now, of course, this version that you're looking at is my standalone application, but you come up to Luminar 2018, come down the drop down list, install plugins, and you'll see Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, both of which are now installed. It also goes into Adobe Photoshop Elements, and this is a very, very good thing. Elements in and of itself is a good program if you don't want to learn all of the intricacies about how to do image manipulation. If you just want to do something, this is the place to go. But Elements in and of itself only wants to work on JPEGs out of your point and shoot. So when you install the Luminar plugin, it gives you that ability to deal with TIFFs and raw images. Very, very good thing. Now, Apple Aperture, of course, is a discontinued program, but if you still have it installed in your computer, then it will install as a dropdown or as a plugin in Apple Aperture. We'll go ahead and hit Done. And let's navigate to Photoshop, and I'll show you how it works. You come up to Filter, you'll see Skylum Software, Luminar 2018, and this image will load in Luminar. And then when you're finished adjusting it, you go through the save process and you'll be reverted back to Photoshop. And we see the image here. So in a nutshell, that's Luminar 2018. Let's look now at some of the specific functions in our next movies.